Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and thank you for attending Mercyhurst University's Celebration of Valor. Please rise for the posting of the colors and remain standing for both the singing of the national anthem by Mercyhurst's own Abigail Wise, followed by the invocation given by Father James Fisker. <coughs> Let us pray. God of mercy, we ask for blessings on all those who have served our country in the armed forces. We ask for healing for veterans who have been wounded in body and soul in conflicts around the world. We pray especially for the young men and women who are coming home with injured bodies and traumatized spirits. Bring solace to them, O Lord. May we pray for them when they cannot pray. Have mercy on all our veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Bring peace to their hearts and peace to the regions they fought in. Bless all the soldiers who have served in non-combative posts. May their calling to serve continue in their lives in many positive ways. Give us all here present today creative vision to see a world that, growing weary with fighting, moves to affirming the life of every human being and so moves away from war. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Today's opening remarks will be given by President Kathleen Gantz, President of Mercyhurst University. Good afternoon, and welcome to our annual Celebration of Valor. It is really my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. This marks my first formal engagement with, uh, with all of you, and um, this community shares the same values that you as veterans share. Just as our founding Sisters of Mercy committed their lives and works to serving those who are poor, sick, and uneducated, our veterans have devoted theirs to ensure America's independent spirit, freedoms, and liberties. Their courage, vigilance, and steadfast devotion stand as an example to all of us, and I am grateful to be part of an institution that recognizes and celebrates this commitment. Today, it is my privilege to say thank you to the veterans in this room, and by extension to all of America's veterans. We will not forget what you have done, and we will always remember that you have protected our country and our lives. Mercyhurst has a proud history of dedicated students, faculty, and staff serving our country. We have been distinguished as a Purple Heart University, and once again, we continue to rise in the US News and World Report rankings, coming in this year at number 15 among the nation's best schools for veterans. We owe a debt of gratitude to all those in our Veterans Affairs Office and in our college community who have helped us to achieve this honorable distinction. Further, the Pride of Pennsylvania Army ROTC Battalion, consisting of over, over 100 students from Mercyhurst, Gannon, and Penn State Barron, has been a proud tradition of our university for over 20 years. Just this year, eight new cadets con contracted with our programming, bringing the Mercyhurst cohort to 38. In conclusion, I call on the memorable words of President John F. Kennedy, who said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. Thank you. Thank you, President Getz. Ladies and gentlemen, I call your attention to the small table at the front of the room where Mercyhurst ROTC Cadet Theodore Cunahan and Cadet Alexander Matusiak will now conduct their traditional POW, MIA, Fallen Warriors Ceremony. This ceremony is often performed at formal military dining functions. Tables can also be seen set for permanent remembrance at VFW posts and other military organizations around the country. It centers around a table set appropriately, but never used, in honor of prisoners of war and those missing in action. The table is set for one, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner. The table is round, showing our everlasting concern for our prisoners of war and those missing in action. The cloth is white, symbolizing the purity of our men and women's motives in answering the call of duty. The single red rose reminds us of the lives of these men and women as well as their loved ones and friends who keep the faith while seeking answers. The red ribbon symbolizes our continued determination to account for them. A slice of lemon reminds us of the bitter fate of those missing and captured and held as prisoners in foreign lands. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears of our missing and their families who long for the answers after de decades of uncertainty. The glass is inverted to represent the fact that the missing and falling cannot partake. A lit candle symbolizes a light of hope that lives in the hearts to illuminate the missing, the missing's way home. 
an empty chair to represent the absence of the missing and falling. Whenever you find yourselves in the presence of one of these tables, please reflect, knowing that our prisoners of war and missing in action would give anything to join their family and friends for one last meal. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Robert Hill, Purple Heart recipient and commander of Erie Chapter of Military Order of the Purple Heart. Mr. Hill was born in Harbor Creek into a military family. His father was in the Army in World War II in Korea. His mother was in the Navy during World War II. Bob's father received three Purple Hearts in World War II and two in Korea. Bob had two brothers that served in the Army and two that served in the Navy. In 1968, he graduated from Harbor Creek High School. He immediately enlisted in the Army and attended basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Shortly after, he completed airborne school at Fort Benning, Georgia. From 1968 to 1989, he served as a member of the Army Special Forces. Bob was in Vietnam from 1969 to 1970. He received a Purple Heart in Vietnam. In 1973, he became an Army Reservist and worked with the Post Office. He worked for the Post Office for 34 years before retiring in 2007. Bob finished his Army service at Fort Bragg, North Carolina with 19 years, 9 months, and 3 days. He was medically retired while in the Army. He achieved the grade of E7, Sergeant First Class. Ruth is Bob's wife and they have two sons, Bob and Aaron, and one daughter, Bonnie. Bob lives with his wife in Wesleyville. Bob has been the commander of the Erie Chapter, Oliver Hazard Perry Chapter 197 of the Military Order of the Purple Heart since the early 80s. Bob was the Military Order of the Purple Heart Department of Pennsylvania Commander from 2017 to 2019. Three years ago, Bob was instrumental in Mercier's University receiving the distinction of being a Purple Heart University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Hill. Thank you very, for the very kind introduction. Uh, as he mentioned, my name is Bob Hill, the commander of Oliver Hazard Perry Chapter 197. And I would thank, I'd like to thank President Getz, uh, Captain Franco, Colonel Constantine, my fellow recipients, the cadets that are present, and ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for being here. And I will do a very brief history on the Purple Heart Medal itself, ribbon slash medal, not, not the medal for 236 years. In uh, 17, beginning of 1782, General, uh, at that time of the Army, George Washington was pacing the floor in his residence in front of Martha Washington, and she kept telling him to sit down and calm down, and what was he worried about? He wanted to give three awards to uh, three NCOs in the Continental Army, which he broke protocol. protocol. Prior to that, only in, in the Colonial Army and all the armies before that, only officers received awards and decorations. So he kept pace and pace and pace. He was a big guy and Martha was a little, little lady. And, he, and she said, well, what do you need? He says, some sort of ribbon. So she picked up her gown and it had silk purple hearts on it. And she goes, well, how about three of these? So that was the beginning of our our ribbon slash medal. And he had the word merit stitched on it in white. And then the medals are the ribbons after they award, they were awarded in uh, 1782, they kind of went into a rest period for 150 years, but they didn't go out of uh, the supply until General MacArthur then the chief of, uh, of the military, he suggested a medal. 
and the prior chief of staff said he, he wanted to make a medal and Congress wouldn't go for it. So now when General MacArthur got his fourth star, nobody in, in Washington could stand up to him. So he had a, a Miss, Miss Will design a medal. So she designed it. General MacArthur received the very first medal in 1942 for his wounds he received in the First World War. And from that time on, from when the, when the general received his first medal, it was like a days of our life story. Everybody wanted to get in on the medal. And so General MacArthur said the medal was only for Army and Army Air Corps, and only those living wounded in action. And I don't know, that didn't make sense to a lot of people, so President Roosevelt stepped in, and he said no. He says for posthumous award also, and we are going to backdate it. So it went back to the Civil War, Spanish-American War, the Boxer Rebellion, World War I, and so forth and so on. And then in 19, and, and who got into it next was the presidents. President John F. Kennedy received one because he, and basically he was the only president ever to receive the Purple Heart. But in 1952, there was an executive order authorizing the Purple Heart to the Navy, Coast Guard, and Marine Corps. So, so we keep on moving. Down to 1962, uh, President Kennedy stepped in again because those of us that fought not me, in the early Vietnam War. It was a war fought by Americans that were assisting an ally against an enemy. So John Kennedy said, well, they are supposed to receive the Purple Heart because they fought in the war with our ally against a, a, a known enemy. So that's how the Vietnam vets got the Purple Heart. And then it went on to, um, Civilians started being authorized the Purple Heart. And that caused a lot of how do you do from the, from the military forces. And also, President Reagan had to step in and give a uh, executive order authorizing the Purple Heart for service members wounded from an enemy in a terrorist capacity. So then that was authorized, which was only right, because that war ended up being a 20-year war on the fight on terrorism, which we have a couple recipients right in front of us here. And then in 1993, it was another executive order for service members wounded in friendly fire, which happens if anybody was here and was in the military, you know it happens. Some friends get killed by friendly fire. 1996, the Purple Heart was, uh, POWs were eligible that were wounded during captivity. And that, of course, was uh, changed also for dying in captivity. The Purple Heart was, was given. 1998, uh, the, the award was uh, for personnel, military personnel and civilian awards were eliminated. If you can remember the, the action that happened at Fort Hood with the civilians dying from, from terrorist activities, or one terrorist actually, in any ways they weren't allowed to receive the Purple Heart as were the soldiers and, and uh, Marines, paratroopers, that jumped into Panama. Many of them uh, got stuck in the swamps, and they ended up getting all kinds of diseases, mainly malaria. And they filed for a Purple Heart, and they weren't allowed to, to receive a Purple Heart because it wasn't wounds received in action against an enemy of this country. In 2011, 
and we keep going. The Purple Heart was um, given to uh, military personnel wounded, resulting from a non-penetrating wound. In other words, concussions, severe concussions. So they were allowed to receive the Purple Heart because a, a lot of the men and women are still in hospitals today from them, IEDs and, and everything else that hit their vehicles. And, though, and then we end up in the year 2015. So the Department of Defense announces the, that eligibility has been extended to those wounded or killed by certain kinds of domestic terrorism. Even though there was uh, terror, terrorism way before, they're talking about uh, it took them till 2015 to award that to the people that died in the, in the towers in, in New York City. Because there, I guess, there was a lot of uh, military personnel there. Now, I know, I know it was quite confusing from the year 1782 to 1942. It was kind of cut and draw, but uh, from 1942 to the present, and I'm sure, this is 2021, I'm sure another, another presidential order or authorization, it, it might change again, or somebody might be added to it after all these years. And, it, and that's one medal, the oldest medal that's still being used by the military and it's the, and since 19, 1782, the only one still being used. And you can tell if something's 236 years old, like an old car, somebody tries to improve it or they continue to improve it. Either uh, militarily or politically, the Purple Heart, unfortunately, might have another change. But back in the late 70s, early 80s, when I was the commander of the local chapter, we, uh, we always ended with a prayer for our units and our organization to disappear. We were the only congressionally sanctioned military unit in the country, not the DAV, Purple, or the VFW American. The Purple Heart is the only one. And we always pray that we go out of existence because no more Purple Hearts means no more war. Thank you very much. President Getz will now present this commemorative eagle to Mr. Hill. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, music for veterans will sing America the Beautiful. Yeah. 
Mr. Hill and President Goetz will now lay the wreath at the foot of the Fallen Soldier Memorial as Major Kalinowski plays Amazing Grace. You can, you can take care of him. And he's going to guide us. Oh, back oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of taps by Mercyhurst student Kirk Morrison while placing your hands over your heart and remain standing for the benediction given by Father James Fisker. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask that your blessing be bestowed on our friends and loved ones. We thank you for this opportunity to share with them this special occasion to honor our veterans. Let us always honor the memory of those brave men and women who sacrificed so that we may experience freedom in a country that is free. Heavenly Father, keep their families in your kind care. Bless them and comfort them in their time of sorrow. Let us be reminded of life, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy, that we may be ever grateful to you for those veterans who gave so much for their country. We ask your blessing upon this program, and when we depart, grant us your continued fellowship that makes abiding peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending Mercerius University's Celebration of Valor this afternoon. Please enjoy the music provided by Music for Veterans. We hope that you enjoyed the program, and have a wonderful evening.